Pricing your items accurately on eBay can be tough. There's a sweet spot you must aim for. Price too low and you leave money on the table. Price too high and your inventory will sit for too long without selling. Why does it feel like eBay makes this more difficult than it needs to be? Why is there a lack of third-party tools meant to help you price your items for eBay? And how do you find that sweet spot that maximizes profit, minimizes time to list, and gets your items to sell quickly? Well, it's complicated. It's more of an art than a science. But let me uncomplicated for you. I'll also walk you through the strategy I use to price all of my items on eBay despite these complications. Have you ever searched for an item on eBay and been confused by the results that you were shown? That was a rhetorical question. I know you have. Let's take this HP inkjet printer I bought at a garage sale a few weeks ago as an example. When I search for HP inkjet 5255, I get over a thousand active listings. But a quick glance at the results show me a mix of products that are not only the printer that I bought, but for ink cartridges, power cables, and other related accessories. When you're checking comps for an item to assess its market value so you can price it accurately, accurately and understand the sell-through rate, having a bunch of related but not exact products mixed into the search results makes your job way more difficult than it should be. If you wanted to calculate an accurate average list price, you would have to manually pick through all of these results, weed out the related but not exact listings, and bust out a calculator. But let's be honest, nobody's really going to do all of that for every product they list on eBay. It's way too much effort and not worth the return. You can try refining the search query to make it more accurate. For example, adding the word printer to the query helps, but doesn't completely weed out the ink cartridges and accessories. The only real way to get an accurate list of results is to search by the product's unique UPC, or universal product code. The only problem there, of course, is that not every product on eBay has a UPC. In fact, I would argue the majority of them don't. So it's pretty safe to assume that using eBay's standard site search to help you research and price your items is going to be an underwhelming experience. Here's the thing, Though. This is a feature, not a bug. eBay search is optimized for buyers, not sellers. It's not designed to produce the most accurate results based on your search term, which sounds crazy, I know. Instead, it's designed to produce results that are most likely to result in a sale. Those are two very different outcomes. There are a huge number of variables that go into determining what results to show to a user to increase the likelihood of a sale, and the search term used is only one of them. How eBay's search algorithm operates like all other search technology companies is a closely guarded secret, so we'll never really know what those variables are or how they are weighted against each other to produce the results that you see in search. Of course, that won't keep us from speculating, right? But eBay search is not broken like so many disgruntled sellers claim. eBay spends millions and millions of dollars every year refining and improving their search technology. Sellers are just using it for purposes it was not fully intended. It is optimized to produce results that are most likely to lead to a sale, not help sellers do their job, unfortunately. That's what Terapeak is supposedly for. Back in 2017, eBay acquired the Canadian company Terapeak, whose mission was to help sellers better manage and grow their businesses on eBay. It's a handy little tool that has since been integrated directly into the My eBay experience. And unlike standard eBay search, it was designed with sellers in mind. The biggest benefit of Terapeak is that it extends search history from 90 days, which is what standard eBay search uses, to two years. So you get a longer history historical view of both the active and sold market activity for the item you are researching. This is especially helpful if you're researching seasonal items that are currently out of season. For example, if you bought a Christmas blow mold this summer like I did and only went by the last 90 days of market activity, you would get a wildly inaccurate analysis of the active and sold market pricing data because a majority of the sales volume for Christmas items happens in Q4, not during the summer. Doing your market research on Terapeak allows you to extend that 90 days to two years so you can get a more accurate picture of how seasonal items should be priced for the height of their season in particular. Terapeak also automatically averages out all active and sold listing prices and displays them on a nice little graph for you. Sounds great, right? Unfortunately, Terapeak suffers from the same problems as eBay's regular search, showing you a bunch of tangential products with wildly different price points, which effectively renders the price averages and graphs not all that useful. Again, some of this can be remedied by futzing with the search terms or applying additional search filters, 
but it's rarely perfect. More often than not, the price ranges that TerraPeak provides are extreme. In the case of this HP printer, sold comps are ranging anywhere from $6 to $170 in used condition. That's not very helpful on its own when trying to determine an accurate price point. Searching by UPC is going to be the most accurate, but again, so many products on eBay simply don't have a UPC. Making the situation even more complicated is that not every seller adds the UPC to their product listings that should have one, so even when you run a search using the UPC, you may be missing out on some listings. Data is hard, y'all. Another challenge with TerraPeak is that it is not easily accessible from a mobile device, so using it to check comps while outsourcing in the field is a frustrating and ultimately unusable experience. Another tool for assisting you with the pricing process is the eBay listing page itself. When you're listing a new item and you get down to the pricing section, you'll see a box on the right that provides a median sold price for whatever you happen to be listing. In my experience, the price advertised here is rarely helpful. Again, it likely suffers from the exact same problem that both regular eBay search and TerraPeak suffers from, where even eBay themselves have a hard time producing an accurate list of product results to calculate pricing averages with. In fact, I'm almost certain that this module is powered by TerraPeak itself, so the results will be very similar to what you get there. This little box is only as smart as the data you provide it in your listing, so this is a good additional bit of motivation to make sure you include things like model numbers and UPCs when listing. The more robust your listing data is, the more accurate this feature will be. But even then, I have found it to be wholly unreliable as a pricing assistant. I have been subconsciously trained over time to ignore it, and you probably have too. Now, what about third-party pricing tools? Well, if you've sold on other marketplaces like Amazon, you'll know that there are a ton of helpful third-party applications out there that provide quick and easy access to market data, including price. And if you've sold on eBay for some time, you have likely noticed that there is a mysterious lack of third-party tools built to do the same thing for eBay. This, again, is by design. A few years ago, eBay restricted access to their Marketplace Insights API, which provided data on sold listings, including pricing. This means that eBay actively does not want anyone else but themselves to build tools that provide any insights into sold prices for products on its platform. For whatever reason, they have become very protective of sold listing data. I can't tell you why. However, a different eBay API that is not restricted provides access to active market pricing data, but their developer terms of service explicitly prohibits the use of this data to be used to suggest or model prices for items listed on eBay sites. So if you build an app using their API to help sellers list their item at an accurate price, you will be in violation of their terms of service and they can shut you down. This is why you don't see many eBay pricing tools out there. I can take a guess why eBay does all of this, but I wish they'd either invest more heavily into improving their own seller tools or remove the restrictions and open up access to their data to allow third parties to do so on their behalf. Not doing either is annoying. To be fair, there are some third party pricing tools for eBay out there, but in my experience, none of them are any good and so I won't offer any recommendations. They are either so old that they have been grandfathered in before the restrictions were put in place, or they have been bypassing eBay's restrictions and obtaining the necessary data in ethically questionable ways, like scraping, which makes them slow and expensive and comes with a high likelihood of simply disappearing overnight should eBay notice and take action to shut them down. So eBay's app and web search were not built with sellers in mind, and so they do not do a good job of helping sellers price their items. TerraPeak, which was ostensibly built to solve this, suffers from many of the same problems and is tough to use reliably, especially on a mobile device. And there is a real lack of third-party applications for eBay focused on helping sellers with pricing because eBay is actively preventing them from being developed. So where does that leave us, the poor sellers who just want to price their items accurately? All of this is why I consider pricing on eBay eBay more of an art than a science. I can't really give you the perfect recipe for how to correctly price items for eBay, just like I can't tell you how you should make art correctly, because there is no right way to do it, and everyone has their own strategy. But there are some tricks and rules of thumb, so let me share those with you. First, pricing on eBay is a skill that can be improved over time. In the beginning of my own reselling journey, I spent way too long during the research and listing process pricing my items correctly. Over time, I got better and eventually learned how to get a feel for the right price with much less time 
time spent. Part of the reason I was able to do this is because I deliberately chose to spend less time researching prices, even though it could mean I was leaving some money on the table. Time is money after all, and if I spent an extra 10 minutes making sure I had the perfect price for every item, was that time spent worth the difference in additional revenue I would get on an eventual sale? It's tough to say, maybe, but probably not. So I was willing to make that trade-off. Whether you are willing to make that trade-off is up to you to decide. We all value our time differently. My recommendation is that you put a time limit on how much time you spend researching prices when listing on eBay, even if that comes at the expense of occasionally leaving some money on the table. And then make every effort to decrease the amount of time you spend while still maintaining a reasonable degree of accuracy for pricing. So when researching prices, I start with standard eBay search. Even with its faults, it is the most convenient and it works well on mobile devices. I use the most specific search terms I can possibly think of in order to get the most accurate list of results possible. The gold standard here is a model number or a UPC like I said earlier, so if whatever I'm listing has either one of those, I use that as my search query. If it does not have a model number or UPC, I get as specific as I can. Think brand names, colors, sizes, shapes, conditions, anything that is going to weed out similar but unrelated items. Your goal here is to get a clean list of results that exactly match the product you are researching. Once I've got that, or as close to that as I can reasonably get, I check active listings to get a feel for the active market prices. Then I check sold listings to get a feel for sold market prices. I'm also doing this to check the sell-through rate, so I can set my expectations around how long it'll take to sell accordingly. If you want more information on how to do this, I have a separate video explaining it, which I'll link down below. When pricing, I give more weight to sold listing prices because often you will find active listing prices inflated well beyond on what items are actually selling for. If I'm selling a seasonal item or standard eBay search is lacking in data or I would otherwise benefit from knowing pricing history beyond 90 days, I hop over to Terapeak to run the same search queries. I don't bother using any third-party historical pricing references like WorthPoint because the types of things that I personally sell typically have enough recent pricing data directly in eBay itself. If you sell things that are super old or super rare or both, WorthPoint may be a valuable but expensive addition to your toolbox. Often I will change the sort order of my search to get a better idea of price ranges. Sorting active listings by lowest priced first lets me know the bottom end of the active market, and if I want something to sell more quickly, I make sure and price it around or even below that number. I also occasionally sort by highest price first to see the top end of the market. Why did these listings sell for a higher price? That's what I'm trying to find out. Also, you should try to remove any personal attachments you may have to your items. It's sort of weird, but as sellers, we can become protective of our inventory, believing we must get top dollar for whatever we're selling as if it's somehow reflective of our worth as a reseller. Try to drop that attachment if you can. Sitting inventory makes no money, and reducing your ideal list price can have a huge impact on the time it takes to sell something, assuming the demand is there. I like to keep my inventory flowing, so I tend to price my items on the low end of the rough pricing averages that I assess during this process. The more rare or unique or desirable, the higher on the pricing scale I go. Again, this is all more of an art than it is a science. Trust me, I wish it were more of a science. Sometimes I'll list something and get a notification that it's sold almost immediately and wonder whether I priced it too low. Sometimes I will list something with a high sell-through rate and it'll sit for way longer than it should and I'll wonder whether I priced it too high. You're gonna make mistakes and that's okay as long as you're learning from them. It's all a part of the reselling journey. I recommend you don't sweat this too much. Don't spend a huge amount of time trying to price your item perfectly because there really is no perfect price. Remember that the time you spend researching and listing has a value too. There are so many variables that go into the value of an item, things like supply, demand, condition, and you learn how to account for these variables only by doing. So go do. Do you have a different pricing strategy or any tips that I didn't mention? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for watching.